putting together a Lewis structure can be challenging for a new chemistry student. So what I want to do is show you three different ways to do it. Now none of these are going to be perfect, but the combination of the three should give you a really solid understanding. First one we're going to do is we're going to take nitrogen. And at the beginning of Lewis structures, a lot of the simple ones involve everything obtaining eight electrons besides hydrogen. And so we're going to follow that kind of guidelines here. So what we're going to do is we're going to look up on the periodic table how many valence electrons each nitrogen has. The nitrogen is in the 15th column, which means it's going to have five valence electrons, or 2s2, 2p3, for its five valence electrons. But what we're going to do is we're going to start to share these until we end up with eight. We're going to start by taking these two, forming a bond there. It's going to take us to here. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So by sharing these two electrons, we're going from having five electrons on each to having two, four, six. So we want to continue sharing electrons. We're now going to combine these two. We end up with a double bond here with the nitrogen. And that takes us to having two, four, six, seven, and two, three, five, seven for each. We're going to do one more bond, form a triple bond for nitrogen. It's going to look like this. And each of these lines is two electrons. We've got two, four, six, eight, two, four, six, and eight electrons for each. So that would be our Lewis structure. So one thing you can do, especially at the beginning for really simple ones, is just put together all the electrons you have and start to put bonds together with things. Okay. The second way you can do this is with a mathematical formula. So let's do another simple one. This time we'll do O2. So the simple formula is how many valence electrons are desired by these atoms? Of course, we shouldn't say desired because it's a human trait, but, but basically, assuming each element besides hydrogen and a couple others will get to eight valence electrons. We're going to subtract from that the number of valence electrons that actually are possessed by these. Okay. That difference is going to be how many more valence electrons we would need to get to this desired state. Okay. If you divide that difference by two, that will equal the number of bonds to form. So here in O2, we have two different atoms. Each of them would desire eight electrons, or 16 total. And then oxygen has six electrons for each one that it brings. So it has 12 electrons to work with in its valence. So if we take eight plus eight minus six plus six, we'll end up with four. So we wish we had four more electrons. If we divide that by two, we'll form two bonds. So we're gonna put O, double bond, O, and then we got to fill in the rest of our electrons. We have 12 to work with. Here are four of them. So we have another eight. So we're going to put four on this atom and four on this atom. So that gives us our two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve electrons, but they're divvied up in a way where if we count the shared electrons towards both, we get two, four, six, eight, and two, four, six, eight. And so thus we've satisfied this octet arrangement by doing a mathematical structure. Now, other thing that you can do is you can just start to learn how things tend to form bonds. So carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, and fluorine, and all the columns underneath. The carbon's column tends to form four bonds. Nitrogen, three, although occasionally you'll end up with two or four. And then oxygen, two, although occasionally you'll end up with one or, or three. And then fluorine's column will usually be one. There are some weird exceptions for that as you get into higher level chemistry. So if we take a molecule and we say CO2, okay, which we've got four, six, 16 valence electrons to work with. Then what we would do is we would put the carbon in the middle because it's the lone element. Then we'd say, okay, well, carbon tends to form four bonds, oxygen tends to form two. So if we put that like this, then that means that the oxygen could each form two bonds with the carbon, and that would give you four bonds for the carbon. That's now got its eight electrons for the carbon, but we still have more electrons to work with. We've put down eight of them. We need to put eight more. So we could put four more on each oxygen like this, and that would then be our Lewis structure. Now again, these are all methods, and together, knowing all three gives you a good chance of putting together a good Lewis structure, but as they get to the point where they start to not follow the octet rule, which is pretty soon, then this is going to kind of give you some sense and intuition into how those Lewis structures are going to form and 
particularly this one here.